Hi, this is Charles with Anycap. In today's video, we will be telling you a story from the anime film Kazumo Nogatari. The movie is set in a world where supernatural creatures exist among humans. A title card showing the dates March 26 to April 7th shows before the main character Araragi Kayomi is seen walking around. He breathes heavily and sharp fangs can be seen along with his teeth. He finds a door and opens it, slowly walking outside towards a balcony. He then widens his eyes as he sees that the place outside is surrounded by crows. He climbs down the stairs as he watches the crows, who seemingly stare back at him. He walks further before he stops as the clouds part in the sky and the sun shines. Sunlight hits him and his entire body is suddenly engulfed in flames. He runs around screaming. His screams then scare the crows away as he falls down from the building. We flash back to March 25th. Kayomi walks down the street before stopping as a girl stands in front of him. Her skirt is swept up by the wind, revealing her underwear. They start to feel awkward around one another as a car crashes nearby. Koyomi continues to look at the girl lewdly before she walks closer to him and tells him how skirts are pretty inconvenient. He then starts to walk away but the girl chases him and tells him that she knows his name, much to his surprise. She tells him that they go to the same school and begins breaking down the meaning of his name. He also tells her name back, which is Hanikawa Tsubasa. Tsubasa is impressed that he knows her as she doesn't think that she really stands out from other students. Kiyomi begins to remember the time when they had their final exams in the first semester of their second year, and how Tsubasa had a perfect score in every subject except one. She begins to tease him as if he is stalking her, but he quickly defends that he only knew this from an alien friend that told him about it. Kiyomi then begins to tell her that he doesn't have any friends and that Tsubasa is very famous, that even someone like him would know her. Tsubasa doesn't find it amusing and tells him to stop. She then stands up and they walk before she asks Kiyomi if he believes in vampires. She begins to tell him of an urban legend of a vampire in their town, and that because of this, people shouldn't go out in the streets alone at night. She also tells him that the vampire has blonde hair and eyes that can make anyone freeze on the spot. Koyomi is skeptical about the entire rumor and tries to find an explanation for it. Tsubasa then shrugs it off and says that she thinks that it's just a rumor, but that if the vampire was real, then she would like to meet them as she has an interest in supernatural creatures. Tsubasa then apologizes for blabbing on about things that might not make sense and then asks him why he doesn't have friends. He tells her that he sees them as a weakness, saying that he would be affected by whatever happened to his friends and he doesn't want that liability. Tsubasa then tells him that having friends can be fun too, but he says that seeing his friends be happy would just make him jealous. They stand in front of the crossroad again and Tsubasa tells him that she was going to the library and asks if he wanted to go along with her. He asks why she would go there and she tells him that she was going to study. He turns her down, telling her that he wasn't really a diligent student and that he would be grateful if he can manage to graduate at the end of the year. Tsubasa then takes Kayomi's phone and gives him her phone number and email. Kayomi watches her leave until she disappears at the corner of the street. He feels confused before walking down the street again. He passes by a car crash before smiling and throwing his bag in the air out of happiness. He goes home where he is alone. With nothing better to do, he begins to have lewd thoughts about Tsubasa. He starts to feel aroused and uncomfortable which leads him to go out of the house and to a store in the city where he buys an adult magazine. He then looks at Tsubasa's email and phone number before sighing and putting his phone away in his pocket. Suddenly all the lights in the city turn off, much to Koyomi's surprise. He ends up by the subway where he finds blood splatters that make a trail down underground. He follows the trail just as the lights turn back on. He sees a large blood stain on the wall in the station but the track continues downwards. He reaches the end and has a panic attack when he finds a woman with a pool of blood under her. The woman demands his help and he approaches her. He asks if she needs an ambulance and raises her up before finding out that her limbs have been cut off. He throws her back out of shock and starts to dial on his phone while his hands shake. She then tells him that she doesn't need an ambulance but instead needs Kayomi's blood. Kayomi then starts to remember the rumor Tsubasa said earlier that a blonde vampire roamed the cities at night. She introduces herself as Kishot Heart Underblade and tells him that she's a vampire. Kishot then says she needs her blood to regenerate. Koyomi says that he thought vampires were immortal, but she says that she cannot regenerate because she has lost too much blood already due to her cut limbs. Kishot tells Koyomi that he should be honored to help her and that she would need all of his blood to stay alive. He starts panicking and shaking again and contemplates running away. He starts to back away and Kishot starts to break down. She flails on the floor splattering blood all over it, while she begs for him to help her. She starts crawling toward him and apologizing. Tears stream down her face and turn into blood. Kayomi screams with fear and runs up the stairs. He soon stops running and sits down as he begins to have second thoughts about whether he should help Kishot or not. 
He tries to argue with himself that he doesn't need to help her, and that she's a vampire, but Kayomi eventually returns to the spot where Kishat is. He lifts her up and promises to do better in his next life, as he thinks he would die after helping her. He then lets Kishat take all his blood. She thanks him as she bites down on his neck and he falls back down to the ground. Kayomi eventually loses consciousness. Later, Kayomi wakes up and thinks whatever happened was a dream. He then looks at his side to find a young blonde child. He tries to wake her up but she's stubborn. He goes outside and the events from the introduction scene continue as Kayomi is on fire. The child catches up to him jumping down from the tall building as she catches fire as well. The child drags Kayomi back into the building and they both stop burning. She then tells him not to go out in the sunlight and Kayomi realizes that the child is the vampire he met earlier, Kiss Shot. She reveals to him that she turned him into a vampire making him immortal and that he is only the second vampire she has ever turned. Kishat then remembers that she never knew his name, but shrugs as she says that his former name doesn't matter now that he's a vampire. Kayomi asks her where they are and she says that they're in an abandoned cram school. He tries to ask another question, calling her Kishat, but she interrupts him and angrily tells him to call her Heart Underblade. He refuses because he thinks it's too long. Kayomi then asks her why she now has the body of a child and not the mature body she previously had. She feels offended and steps on his foot before walking away. She then explains that Kayomi's blood wasn't enough to let her keep her original form, so she took a smaller form that she could keep up. Kishat asks if he understands everything now, to which he says yes. She then tells him to pat her head to show his obedience. He does and finds it adorable. She then adds that she didn't intentionally make him into a vampire. It was just that every human that gets bitten by a vampire turns into one. She was still grateful that it happened because she had something for Kayomi to do. He asks her if he can still become human again, and she says that she can make it happen. She tells him about the vampire hunters that cut off her limbs. Kisha orders Kayomi to take back her limbs from the three of them. She tells him that if he wanted her to turn him back into a human, then she would need to be in full power. Getting her limbs back would accomplish that. Later that night, Kayomi finds the vampire hunters. The hunters talk between one another, but it just sounds like garbled noises. Another person watches on top of a building before jumping down and running towards them. The vampire hunters start to charge towards Kayomi, but are stopped by the mysterious person. The altercation is over and the man then takes him to a safe place. Kayomi thanks him and the other person says that he doesn't need to thank him. He then says Kayomi's name, which alerts him. The man tells him that he's going to bring Kayomi home, which confuses Kayomi. He explains that he was the one that took his shot to the abandoned cram school. Kayomi asks who he was, but the man doesn't tell him his name. They arrive back at the school and regroup inside a lecture hall. Kishat greets Kayomi and turns to the man, saying that he looks familiar. Kayomi and Kishat then begin discussing what happened while the man sits at the back of the lecture hall. Kayomi says that if the hunters were able to defeat Kishat when she was at her full power, then there was no way that he could beat them. He also begins to worry if the vampire hunters could find them at their hiding spot. The man reassures him that he drew a boundary around the building to keep them safe before he introduces himself as Mei Mei. He then goes on to say that he doesn't like to perform exorcisms unlike the vampire hunters. Instead, he prefers to be a mediator between the two sides, the humans and the monsters or oddities. Mei Mei then offers to be the mediator between Kayomi and Kishat and the three vampire hunters. However, the offer is only if Kayomi agrees to eventually pay him 2 million yen. Kisha asks for his exact plan, but he doesn't go into details and just tells her that he'll help negotiate with them and to separate the three vampire hunters so that they can take back her limbs. She is convinced and tells Kayomi to secure the 2 million yen so Meimei would help them. He hesitates at first as he doesn't have that much money saved, but he eventually agrees. The movie ends as Meimei mockingly thanks them. This was the first film in a trilogy. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with what anime movie you'd like me to recap next.